Hi there, my name is Ben Toms. I'm the Head of Innovation and Platform at DataJar. And you might also know me as MacMill. You can find me on MacMill.com, on the Mac Admin Slack as MacMill, or on Twitter as at MacMillBlog. Now, DataJar, we love Auto Package. I just want to take a moment to thank everybody involved from the maintainers of the core project to recipe repo authors and to folks who, um, who just log issues and use the product itself. Thank you so very, very much. We do have our own repo. And our repo itself has got over 260 download recipes. And how we get to that and how we kind of start off on this journey is what this talks about. So we're going to be looking at digging for download URLs for auto package recipes. This is the start of almost any auto package journey is the download of the product. If you're looking for tips on how to import a product locally, it's not going to be this talk. It's literally just going to be looking at tips and tricks on how we can find these download URLs. We're going to cover such things such as the questions that you might need to ask at the beginning, a little, it, little, some little tips and tricks around investigating, different classes of URLs, static, dynamic, of data, as well as we're going to look at some level of disassembly. And one more thing, one, one last final tip that might well help you. Throughout the talk, there's going to be uh, examples that we're going to be putting in here, and then there's also going to be other items that I'm going to be talking about. Um, and throughout the talk, you can actually you'll find these links are actually in this in this GitHub repo here. This will be linked at the very end as well. So let's look at the questions. So we often get asked, could you add this item to uh, auto package? And we might just be given uh, the package itself. Really, you're going to want a download link. You're going to want some more information than just something sent to you on Google Drive or OneDrive or what have you. When you look at this, is it a public download? Is this something you can download without logging in? Um, and is the download itself specific to your organization? Or is it something that you can actually make maybe generic? Maybe there's an all code we can swap out. Uh, if it is specific to your organization, this might be something you don't want to make public. You might want to hide on your own uh, private uh, auto package repo. And also does the software itself uh, have a built-in updater? The updater itself is something that we can maybe piggyback off and then use that mechanism by which to, down to get the download URLs. So we look at investigating, here's an example. Hey, could you guys add Ring Central? Okay, fine. So you go to the vendor's page, no download links, Google products, Ring Central app, request demo, request demo, request demo. This is a common pattern. What I would advise here is you go to the support page. And from in here, you can find something. Normally, I mean, here we've got a download Ring Central app on the front page here, as well as a button at the bottom but it could be buried within the support pages is a direct download link that you can use. If we click the link and it automatically downloads a package, that's a really good start. So from here, if we right click the download button and click copy link, we'll examine the URL we've got. Now this is an example here of what I would call a static URL. With these static URLs, we just need to run a couple of tests and then we can look to add them within into an um, auto package. This is a simple test using curl. Can we curl down that package and, and copy it and curl it down to our downloads? Uh, there's link to curl and different arguments, et cetera, within the GitHub repo. So you'd have to be curl master at the beginning, but curl is a very, very uh, simple tool that we can use to check these items just to see, can we download this package? So from here, we've downloaded the package and we found it within the downloads. And then looking at a suspicious package, we can tell, do you know what? That's a great package. Uh, it's, it's, it's not corrupt. It's not like we've pulled down the wrong file. It's perfect for us to use. So what we can then do is we can then use this within a URL downloader processor within our, within our recipe. This is a normal kind of system that you see. We'd have a download URL, which is an overridable URL. And then you'd reference that variable within the URL processor, the downloader processor. Again, the link to the documentation around the URL downloader processor is available in the repo. So with this in place, you might know some things. So first of all, why does uh, every time you run a recipe, why is it downloaded, uh, the item downloaded? Well, auto package will look for standard HTTP headers, uh, last modified e-tag. And if your item's on a mirror, those might not be there or they might change, such as the example there is given with VLC. Also, if you're using Monkey and it keeps reimporting important every time, you want to run make catalogs between. Now, the auto package wiki is great and it's extensive and it's really, really helpful for these type of things. So if you're diving into creating recipes, et cetera. It's a really handy tool to keep to, to keep to hand as well. Here's another example. So we've gone to a website for the MUT. Now the MUT is a great tool if you're a Jamf admin. Uh, and then from here, we've got two different URLs. One we can download from the App Store. So obviously that takes you to the App Store, not applicable for auto package. The next one, we can right click, download the link, and we get a link looking like this. 
So this is slightly different. This isn't something that's going to be static. This isn't something that will pull down always the latest version. You can see there's versioning information within there. This is what I kind of call dynamic URLs. So with a GitHub URL, we take the GitHub URL we've got there, we just strip off the end bit. So we're left with just the github.com, the organization, which is Mike Levinick, the repo, which is Mutt, and the releases. Go in here in Safari, takes you, to an, takes you to a lovely page where the releases are, and it's nice and simple. There's one DMG there, and we're ready to go. So we can take that URL that we chopped up earlier. What we're going to need is just the organization and the repo. We can add this within a uh, GitHub release info provider processor, as linked in there. So again, bearing in mind, I'm linking out to these examples, just trying to give you folks quick tips on how to find the stuff that you need. Sometimes you go to a page and they'll have a, a, an, an option top right saying fork me on GitHub. You click within there, you'll be taken normally directly to the GitHub page. And if you're not sure how GitHub works, we're looking for the releases again, which are on the right hand side. So if we click into the releases, we get taken to a similar page as what we saw before. However, there's multiple different assets within here. There's, there's an ARM version, uh, an x64 version, there's zips, there's XEs, there's lots of different options available here. So how do we pull apart and grab what we need? I would tend to simply you know, select and copy that text and go to a very, very helpful site here. So regex101. regex101.com is an extremely helpful site for obviously regex, but generally you know, these also package recipes. When we're at this page here, if we click on flavor on the left-hand side and select that as Python, it is Python 2.7, but it's applicable for what we do within auto package. In the test string section, if we copy the, uh, the, the items that, we, that we, we, we selected earlier, and then in the regular expression, if we copy over the thing we're looking for, here's the example. So we copied over all that stuff we highlighted, we've, we've, and then we've copied over the, the keyword that we're looking for, the latest version, and it tells you it's made a match. Now on the right-hand side here, you've got different things that are gonna be very helpful to you. First of all, is an explanation of what's matched and what hasn't matched, um, as well as what matches you, you've hit, and at the bottom is a quick reference. So this is something that you're gonna be able to work with and learn yourself on how do you change this? How, like, how do you make this so that actually this could be version agnostic? And so we made some changes within here, and this is an example. And again, it's telling you what you need to do. Regex is far outside of the scope of any kind of presentation, especially one that's 15 minutes long or so. Once you've found that, we can uh, go to our GitHub releases info provider processor. We can add in the organization repo as we saw before. And then we can add in the asset regex. And here we've even taken it a step further just to grab the latest Mac X64 DMG, even if they change the, uh, the name at the beginning or capitalization. Another example is when you get given a, a page like this, a support page, you find the URL that you want. And then we'll try and, you know, we'll have to curl that down because we know that URL isn't right. So what happens if we can curl down that URL that had all the links in it. Awesome, we've got all the, all the stuff in here. Again, let's go into regex 101, copy the body of that curl text, and then copy the URL in the, that we need for the item. Again, we can see, do you know what, it can match. We can take this down even further. We can get rid of the versioning information. And this gives us the regex we need. So this will then use URL text searcher processor. So that's the URL we're looking for. And this is the pattern. Again, regex 101 is your friend here, as well as curl. Now, sometimes you get to a page, nice URL here, we go and download the item, but we do our kill check and nothing happens. We can't download the item. But when you click on it, it downloads it for you. What happens in this case is basically your browser is telling the server that actually it's a Mac that's clicking the button. So what we need to do here is use a user agent. Again, there's links to user agents in the repo. But if we add this to the curl command, we can see it's redirecting us. And these redirections are things that happen automatically within auto package. So again, the URL downloader, which URL are we go into, and then we extend the command here. Here we've extended the command with a request header, basically adding the, the uh, user agent. Data URLs. Now, these can be a bit trickier, um, but they can be, still be quite fun to dig into and find. So first of all, I'd really recommend Charles Proxy for this, uh, which can be downloaded for free as a trial and then purchase the license. With Charles Proxy installed, if you click on help SSL proxy in, and click on install the child's root certificate, go through the steps to install the certificate and then make sure you always trust the certificate, et cetera. With all this done and dusted, we can then load up an application with a built-in updater. So here we've got the NVivo app. We've loaded the application, we've clicked on help and check for updates or the NVivo app and check for updates, wherever it ends up sits within the app. Charles Proxy already has said, okay, cool. Well, it's hitting this URL. So if we right click the URL sitting and choose enable SSL proxying, and then send the command again, 
it should then give us the full path they're saving, which we can see is the URL at the top. You right click that and choose copy selection. We've got this XML uh, file that is being referenced. If we curl this file, so you can have access to it. And this is where maybe reaching out to your Apache community or just from what you know, this essentially is pointing to a Sparkle feed. Uh, and it does say here, it's a Sparkle type of RSS XML. This means you can, add, uh, you can add it to a Sparkle updates info provider processor. So again, the usual cadence here would be to, the usual uh, method here would be, if the Sparkle feed URL is a variable, you would add that to the processor. And then this then knows how to grab the details, how to start the download of the item. But sometimes you need to look at disassembling the, the artifacts on disk because maybe you can't proxy the item because it's doing, it won't allow man in the middle, which is essentially what Charles is doing. Well, Sparkle was the data we were looking at a moment ago, and that's one of the ones that I, I like. There's many others out there, but that's one I like and use in my apps, and we do use it within our data apps as well. So if you look here at Jam Switcher, if we go into the application itself, right click, show package contents, within contents, and then frameworks, we'll find there's a Sparkle framework. So that's a really good indicator that actually, you know, Spark was being used to update the item. We go back and find the application's info P list. We look at this here. What we're going to find potentially is an issue feed URL, which is at the bottom of the screen there. Now, this is the software update feed URL for Sparkle. So again, that's the URL that we can use there. Again, just put that into the Sparkle update info provider. Straight away, you put the feed and then the, pro the recipe will carry on from there. Sometimes, however, you can see an app's got Sparkle, that the Sparkle got data, but it's actually the details aren't there. There are other details available. So what we need to do now, so we need to find the bundle name. Now, this is the app that launches. You know, the question is, how are we going to do this? So we need to find the app that launches when we click the button on the bundle that runs. Find that with, within the application, which will always be app, within the, the application bundle, contents, Mac OS, and then the bundle name. And then we can process this in two different ways. One is using strings. And if you run strings and you haven't got the Xcode command lines and tools tool installed, it will ask you to install. If you have them installed already, you can also just look at the man page. And it would basically find printable strings in an object or another binary file. So even if it's compiled app, it will try and find the printable strings for you. It's very simple. You run it, you, you choose strings, and then the binary or the bundle you want to run it against. So here we've got the bundle for the application. And now from this, we've got 86,754 strings. I'm not going to expect you to kind of go through here and read each one, etc. Command F, find what you need. Um, it could be HTTPS, could be XML, could be JSON, just different things that you're going to need to try and look for that you think, well, if this, this device is hitting an endpoint, um, where is it getting this update information from? In this instance, the word Sparkle happens to be right within that URL. Makes it very, very easy to find. We've got two Sparkle feeds here, one for beta and one for normal release. Again, we curl that this time, right? We're being moved. Uh, there's a redirect in place. So we curl the redirect, or we use minus L to follow the redirect. And we're given the Sparkle feed again. And we're also given the, the XML file here. So again, straight away put this in the Sparkle feed. Now, it might be that every application doesn't have a Sparkle feed. There might be a JSON file, et cetera. But those type of things can then be searched with the URL text search and the other things I showed you earlier. Just so happens to be that I found a number of examples that all use Sparkle. Another example, another thing we can do here to disassemble and look at an app is Hopper, uh, which uh, allows you to reverse engineer applications. Turns out if you go to the website, Egg Mark Zach uh, has got a lovely review here of Sparkle, of um, Hopper, uh, and he might be watching, uh, but he's a, he's a prior presenter. Hi, Ed. Essentially, you load the application, click on read, executables and assemble, point it at the bundle we saw earlier. This is where it's the, I don't know what I'm doing part. I just click through. You wait for that bar at the top to fill. And then from here, in that search bar, we can start to look for things. So again, HTTPS, Sparkle, et cetera, and we can find the URL we need. So it just takes a bit of time to figure it out. But there's one more thing we can do. Reach out to people, email, call them, what have you. Uh, there was an issue with FossHub where they didn't want people downloading items because it was random locations and using bandwidth. That has now been okayed. So you can reach out to them and actually get approval to download from one static IP. And I presume that you know, this site here from Microsoft wouldn't have been uh, about if it wasn't for the fact of people actually reaching out to Microsoft and requesting these downloads directly for themselves. Last place to go really would be the auto package channel on Slack. You can reach out to people. There might be other people that have got the recipes available. There might be people there that are actually there able to help you because those recipes might be something they need. 
And we have four seconds to go. Here's the link again, uh, my very last slide. That's 125 slides. Um, and you can find me on the Discord Slack for any Q&A.